In this video, we will practice solving trig equations. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.10. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. If you have not yet memorized these nine trig values, please pause the video and memorize the chart right now. For problems 1 through 4, we will find all solutions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. For number 1, we need to isolate the cosine by dividing both sides by negative 2. So we get the cosine of x is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. We can find the reference angle by asking ourselves the cosine of what angle is radical 2 over 2. We have memorized that the cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2, so the reference angle is pi over 4. On the interval from 0 to 2 pi, here are the four angles with a reference angle of pi over 4. Since we want cosine to equal negative radical 2 over 2, we will stick to quadrants 2 and 3, where the x value, and thus the cosine, is negative. We can think of pi as 4 pi over 4. So this angle in the second quadrant is 3 pi over 4. And this angle in the third quadrant is 5 pi over 4. And that's it. These are the two solutions to the equation on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. For number 2, to get the sine x by itself, we begin by subtracting 5 from both sides. So we have negative 4 sine x is equal to negative 2. Dividing both sides by negative 4 leaves sine x is equal to positive 1 half. We can find the reference angle by asking ourselves the sine of what angle is 1 half. We have memorized that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so pi over 6 is the reference angle. On the interval from 0 to 2 pi, here are the four angles with a reference angle of pi over 6. Since we want sine to equal positive 1 half, we will stick to quadrants 1 and 2, where the y value, and thus the sine function, is positive. The angle in the first quadrant with a reference angle of pi over 6 is pi over 6 itself. We can think of pi as 6 pi over 6. So this angle in the second quadrant is 5 pi over 6. These are the two solutions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Number 3, we need to get tangent x by itself. We begin by subtracting 3 from both sides. That gives us 2 tangent x is equal to negative 2. If we divide both sides by 2, we get tangent x is equal to negative 1. We can figure out what the reference angle is by asking ourselves the tangent of what angle is equal to 1. We have memorized that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So the reference angle is pi over 4. On the interval from 0 to 2 pi, here are the four angles with a reference angle of pi over 4. We know that tangent is the slope of the terminal side. So since we want tangent to equal negative 1, we will restrict ourselves to quadrants 2 and 4, where the slope, and thus the tangent, is negative. We can think of pi as 4 pi over 4. So the angle in the second quadrant is 3 pi over 4. We can think of 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. So this angle in the fourth quadrant is 7 pi over 4. So these are the two solutions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Number 4, to isolate sine x, begin by subtracting 2 from both sides. That gives us sine x 
is equal to negative 1. This is not going to be one of the values on the chart. Instead, this is going to be a quadrantal angle. The angle we are looking for is going to fall right on the x-axis or the y-axis. Sine is the y value on the unit circle. And as we begin on the positive x-axis, the y value is zero. Now, as we rotate around, when we get to this position, the y value is now positive one. As we rotate around to this position, the y value is back to zero again. And finally, as we rotate further to this position, the y value is at negative one. We were looking for the angle where the y value is negative one. And that is right here at three pi over two. So x is three pi over two. And that's the only solution on the interval from zero to two pi. Number five. Let f of x equal two plus six cosine x, and g of x equals five. In the xy plane, what are the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the graph of f and g on the interval from zero to two pi? The points of intersection will be where f is equal to g. So let's set f equal to g and solve. To isolate the cosine x, we begin by subtracting two from both sides. So that's six cosine x is equal to three. Next, we divide both sides by six. So we get cosine x is equal to one half. Three over six reduces to one half. We can find the reference angle by asking cosine of what angle is one half? We have memorized that the cosine of pi over three is one half, so the reference angle is pi over three. On the interval from zero to two pi, here are the four angles with a reference angle of pi over three. In this case, we want the cosine to equal positive one half, so we will stick to the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, where the x value, and thus the cosine, is positive. The angle in the first quadrant with a reference angle of pi over three is pi over three itself. We can think of two pi as six pi over three. So this angle in the fourth quadrant is five pi over three. These are the x coordinates of the two intersection points on the interval from zero to two pi. Number six. Let f of x equal negative radical two plus five sine x, and g of x equals seven sine x. In the xy plane, what are the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the graph of f and g on the interval from zero to two pi? The intersection points will occur where function f is equal to function g. So let's set function f equal to function g and solve. I notice that we have like terms here. So let's get them together by subtracting five sine x from both sides of the equation. On the next step, we will have negative radical two is equal to two sine x. Next, we isolate sine x by dividing both sides by two. This will give us negative radical two over two is equal to sine x. We can find the reference angle by asking ourselves the sine of what angle is equal to radical two over two. Ignore that negative sign. We have memorized that the sine of pi over four is radical two over two. So the reference angle is pi over four. On the interval from zero to two pi, here are the four angles with a reference angle of pi over four. Since we want sine to equal negative radical two over two, we will stick to quadrants three and four, 
where the y value, and thus the sine function, is negative. We can think of pi as 4 pi over 4. So this angle in the third quadrant is 5 pi over 4. We can think of 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. So this angle in the fourth quadrant is 7 pi over 4. These are the two intersection points on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Number 7. Let f of x equal 3 minus 2 tangent x and g of x equals 5 tangent x plus 3. In the xy plane, what are the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the graph of f and g on the interval from 0 to 2 pi? Again, the intersection points will occur when function f is equal to function g. So we just need to solve this equation. I'm noticing that we have like terms on opposite sides of the equation. So I'm going to get those like terms together by adding and subtracting to both sides. For example, uh, let's start by subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation. So if I uh, subtract 3, right, minus 3, minus 3, those are gone. So that's going, going to leave me with negative 2 tangent x is equal to 5 tangent x. For heaven's sakes, do not divide both sides by tangent x. You will lose all of your solutions if you do that. Instead, let's add 2 tangent x to both sides of the equation. So if I do plus 2 tangent x on both sides, we can bring these like terms together. So we will have 0 is equal to 7 tangent x. When you divide both sides by 7, on the right hand side the 7's cancel out, but on the left side uh, 0 divided by 7 is still 0. So we have 0 is equal to tangent x. We know tangent to be the slope of the terminal side. So the question is, at what angles will the slope be 0? Well, the slope is going to be 0 right here at the beginning, which is at 0 radians. And then the slope will be 0 again over here at pi radians. All right, so the slope will be 0 here and here. A horizontal line has a zero slope. So that means x is going to equal zero and x is going to equal pi. These are the x coordinates of the intersection points on the interval from zero to two pi. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.